Well, welcome everyone. Um, again, my name is Art Garcia, and I'm going to talk to you about things that you can do with APIs. Um, one of the problems that a lot of uh, program managers have is getting release notes out. So you have a build that just got created. You've got, you know, four or five teams working on it. They're all checking in stuff. They've got user stories all over the place. And now they come to you and said, OK, I need release notes for these 400 user stories that we just put in and that we just worked through. So typically, you go with each user story, you cut and paste some information out, and you create some release notes. I found a better way of doing that. So instead of doing all that, um, and I'm going to show you one way of doing it with, with one product, and there's ways of doing it with others as well. I'm going to show you how to do it with Azure DevOps um, and their uh, DevOps architecture, but you can also do it with JIRA. JIRA has a similar set of APIs that you can use, and I'm actually going to think about doing a talk where I can actually do that with JIRA as well. So this is the one and only slide I'm going to show you, maybe a second one. Um, I'm going to build release notes two different ways. First, we're going to do it from a query. So you'll go and you'll create a query, say I've got 20, 30, however many work items I want. And then we will go through the APIs and create release notes. The second one is we'll do it from a build. So we will tag a couple of builds with some fancy tags like test123. And from that, we will generate release notes as well. If time permits, um, I have also have a, uh, a way of copying work item types. But uh, we're going to concentrate on the release notes. And there's a link there to my GitHub repo. Feel free to fork it, and you can get all of the uh, APIs and all the stuff in there. OK. Next slide, come on. OK, so brief agenda. Um, everything that I'm going to show you here, I'm doing in PowerShell. And I'm using PowerShell to interact with the APIs. I'll show you briefly how to create a personal access token, which is the security token that you need to talk to the APIs in Azure. <clears throat> we'll briefly talk about authentic authentication and how we create the API calls. From there, we'll go right into the code, showing you how to do this from a given query and then from build tags. And again, if time permits, I'll show you some stuff I did with work items. Uh, but if not, you'll feel free to look through the code and mess with that yourself. OK, so that's it for the slides. So first thing I'll show you very quickly is here is the documentation for the REST APIs. And our previous uh, speaker did an awesome job of document of talking about documentation. Uh, I'm not sure if, if this documentation is, is on par with that, but I hope so. Um, so this is Microsoft's version. Uh, JIRA also has a similar version where they go through all the APIs and show you what each one does. And we're going to start in Azure DevOps. Uh, I've got a query I generated called user stories. And it has 21 items in it. So first thing we need to do is we need to create a personal access token. So this is, hopefully it's not going to shut me down. Mm. Okay. Arthur, I would like to yes. ask if there is at any point that we have to be able to read uh, what is on your screen, please zoom in a lot. OK. Thank you. How's that? Better? 
Um, header one, two size, I think is good to read. Uh, it, it would take a few seconds for some people that it sharpens. So that's why I said go slow. Thank you. I'm okay. sorry for the interruption. No problem. Okay, so um, you go to create a new token. Give it any name you want. And you can do it for 30 days. Uh, you can do custom, and I think you can do almost up to 180 days. The big part is how what you want to have access to. And here you go through each one of the pieces and you want to get full control of everything. Um, I'm not a administrator on this site, so I don't have access to full control. And I found that that sometimes doesn't work. So I go through and make sure that I have full control. And then you can change this based on what APIs you're going to use. You know, if you're not going to use the test management, you don't need to have access to those. You can, you know, mess with those as you need to. The one big thing that you have to do for all this to work is down here where we get to the wiki page. Come on. Make sure you have read and write to the wiki page. Because what this uh, APIs are going to do is they're going to grab all those user stories, they're going to format them really nicely, and they're going to drop them into the wiki page. And if you look in, um, look around some, some other coding sites, you'll see that other people have done something similar but nobody's actually put it into a wiki page all in the same process. And that's kind of what I'm going to do here. So you create that token. And once you create that token, it's going to give you that token, make a copy of it. And you, once you hit OK, you'll never see that token again. So make sure you copy it. So now that we have our user token, we're going to go right into the code. And I'm going to show you uh, this. I know I definitely have to expand a little more. OK, so this is uh, my PowerShell code. Um, so the first thing I do is I create a couple of uh, PSM1 files, just a place to put all of my functions instead of you know writing a huge long PowerShell script, I break it down into a couple of different functions. So I grab security, I grab my release notes, and then I grab something I call project definitions. And I'm gonna show you a blank version of that, which I call project definition two. This is where I put all of the keys, all of the things I need in order to get this to work. What's the name of the organization? Where is that personal access token? What is the name of the project? Uh, what is the wiki page? Where are, you know, all, all the pieces that you need in order this to work, which makes it a whole lot easier in, instead of having to go in and, and put all those things in every time. I drop them in right here and boom, it runs. So after that, I'm a big proponent of printing out things and making sure you can see things. And we're going to go right into the code. So get release notes by query. First thing we're gonna do is grab our parameters file. And then we talk about authentication, uh, authentication tokens. And I mentioned that earlier. So what this does is it takes that personal access token, takes the email address, and creates a 64-bit key that we will pass to our uh, APIs. And if you notice in my code, 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, I will put a link to the original documentation 
I will put a sample of what the API should look like, and then I build the API. So in this case, the first thing we need to do is we need to get a list of all the projects. And then once we get a list of all the projects, I'm going to filter it by the project that I'm looking for. I found it a whole lot easier to do that than to go find the project. Sometimes it, it, it gives me trouble finding the project. So then we go and find that query that I talked about. So if you remember, oh, sorry. Here is the query we were talking about. So this is our query of user stories. That's 21 user stories. So this code is going to grab that query. And currently, I put it in shared queries. You can put it anywhere you want. Just tell it where it is. Then from there, we're going to grab all of the work items in that query. And the way I have set this up is, because a customer asked me to do it this way, is we have what are the current query and what is future query. So in the documentation, you'll see in the wiki page, you'll see here is the current release and then here is what's coming up in the next release. So you can have both of them in the same uh, wiki page. So I grab the future queries if they, I've grabbed the current query, I grab the future query if it exists, and now it's simple. Now it's set up a couple of arrays, and then we're going to just iterate through each one of the query, each one of the work items in the, in the query. We grab the work item, and then in here I had to do, uh, little finagling. So the customer I was working on had some custom fields that they wanted for the description. So we use those custom fields. Um, I modified the code so that if you're not using those custom fields, you just grab the system description or you grab who it is assigned to. And then once you have the actual work item, you can decide here what fields you want to use in your output, what fields you want to put in, what fields you want to omit. In our case, we have a program, we have a request type, we have this, the sprint, we have what team and who it was assigned to. And we just loop through that entire uh, list of work items and pull those into our array. Then we go through and do the exact same thing for future queries. And again, same thing. Now, um, I just want to stop here. Quest any questions or am I going too fast? Everybody with me so far? Looking in the chat, I don't see. I'm going to assume yes then. Okay, so in this particular, in our particular instance, we wanted to sort this by one of the fields that we used. So we have our sort in there. And now all I'm doing here is I'm actually creating the markup that we're going to put into the wiki page. I grab the date. I'm going to put in a table of contents. And what's interesting here is you want to put a character turn line feed at the end of every line. Well, you have to actually, for PowerShell to, to work, you actually have to put in the characters, the, the ASCII characters for 13 and 10 character turn line feed. If not, it won't work. And this was just a boatload of trial and error to get that to work properly. And, and this section right now is just how they want, the particular customer wanted this formatted. 
we go through what's new. We're just adding some other fields. Now here is where we can add links for who the leads are. So if we know who the person that it's assigned to, you can actually put the link in there so that when you click on it, it'll actually go to that record. And then this section right here is very important. If you look at a work item and you open a work item and you see here, if you wanna go and change that work item, you notice that you get this nice little list so you can put markups and put all kinds of stuff in there. You can add bullets, whatever you want. That's that's works very nicely. When you're going into PowerShell and you're trying to get that data out of PowerShell, out of the API into PowerShell, you get a lot of gobbledygook. So what I've had to do is go through and filter out the div tags. I had to filter out span tags. Uh, I wanted anchors in there, so we put the anchor tag back in. We had to mess with that as well. If not, if you look at what gets returned from the API, it's a whole lot of HTML code with the text embedded in it. And if you try to write that directly to the wiki page, it blows up. It will not, it, it will throw an error. So that's why you have to filter all this out and get it to, to come back in. And then we do the same thing for the future queries if it exists. So now we have our content. And we're going to send this content to a function I call write to wiki page. And again, here we go. Same thing. We're grabbing our authorization token. And this is a little different. So what we've done is we create, let me show you actually what the output looks like. So here is what the output looks like. It's some stuff I've put in here, some what's new. I've asked for some feedback. And then this goes through and takes all 21 of the queries. And this is how this particular customer wanted it formatted. But you can change that format section to do anything you want with it. And like, for instance, here's the anchor. So this is the work item. This is the, the work item. If I click on it, it will actually bring me to that work item. So it makes release notes really nice and easy because here is everything I worked on. Uh, here's a small, you see, here's a small description. And then here's the actual work item that the user can go and look at. And what I have done here is I've put everything under a parent page called all the automated release notes. You don't have to do that. You can put it anywhere you want. This worked very well for us. So it keeps it, if you've got a wiki page that has a lot of information, this kind of keeps it isolated. So back to the code on writing to the wiki page. First thing we're going to do is make sure we find the wiki. And again, that is going to be in here in our project definitions, the name of the wiki page, the name of the wiki. So we find the wiki. And then we're going to see if that parent page exists. If the parent page exists, or actually we're going to try to, yeah, we're going to find see if the parent page exists. If it doesn't exist, I'm going to throw an error. And I'm just going to write a blank parent page out there and just call it parent release page. I create 
a small JSON token to send, JSON text to send to it. And I do a put method that creates the wiki page. Then we take the parent page and we take our published page and we make that the landing page. And what I've done here is I delete that page every time. Uh, it, there is a way of updating that page, but it becomes very difficult because you have to go pull the, all of the wiki content down, find the exact section that you want to replace and do a search and replace. And that just became very cumbersome, very difficult. So what I've done is I'm deleting that page and then I write the page, I create the page. And when I create the page, I send it the contents that I had from before. And then we're done. So let's see if the gods of the demo gods will think favorably on me and let's actually run this. Here we are, we've got all our information we need. Going and it finds each one of the user stories, boom, writes to the page. So, if I refresh this page, there we are, release notes for the 12th just now and here are our 21 queries uh, any questions anything in the chat so some uh, said they're doing something similar using Jenkins Yeah, I haven't done that, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do it with Jira, and then I'll try Jenkins if they have the right the same APIs as well. So that's doing it from a query. So the other way to do this is let's do it from a build. So we have our build. This is our build, and this build has 49 changes. It has four work items, and it has one uh, published artifact. And what I did is I went in here and I created a tag called test123. Made it simple. And we're going to go into our code, and the code for this is a little bit different. So we're going to do the same thing of, you know, grabbing our modules, grabbing our definition page. And then we're going to get release notes by tag. There we go, sorry. Okay, so same idea, same thing. Um, with the token. And in this case, what we've done is we're doing it from a build. And when you, you when developers check in code from a build, they'll sometimes check in, you know, based on a task, not necessarily a user story. So what this code will do is it will find all of the things that were checked in to that build and then roll up to whatever the user story is and only show you the user story for that build. So we set up a bunch of arrays and the first thing we do is go through and grab all of the 
build tags. And then we go through and we find all of the builds in each build tag. And we start with the first one and we grab all the work items. And again, we want the user story or the bugs in this case. And if we don't find it, we kind of go up and grab the parent. That's what this code is doing. And then we go through and we put the build changes in there. We put all the changes in. Then we go through and we get all the stages. So a build has, you know, different stages. We grab all of the stages and you can also get out of this who the approver was uh, and what all the jobs and all the checkpoints inside of each, each one of those. Grab all of those. Then we check to see if there's actually any artifacts and we pull down the artifacts. And we write our build record. And then I'm returning just an array, all the array of all these things that I've built. After that, we go set release notes to wiki. And this is very similar to the other code that we showed on doing it from a query. We're just building the content. And again, the carriage return line feed. And we set up in this instance different sections. So we have a summary of build items. We create a little summary. We create the details, including the source repo. We add in whatever stages were there. And then we go and put in all the work items associated with that build, all the changes associated with that build, and then any artifacts associated with that build. And I was going to do some backup plans as well, but ended up not doing that. And then again, the right to wiki. So the exact same thing. So let's see if we can get this to work. So if we come over to the wiki page, and there is no release notes. This will generate something called just release notes. So I have a release notes one uh, that I did a few months ago. So let's run this code and see what we get. Oh, wait a minute. PowerShell gets lost every once in a while. Okay. So we're going to build the release notes. We get all our work items. Get all the changes.
and then do our set release notes to wiki which is all the formatting and it says it's done so if i refresh this page release notes just now so i have a little section i call permanent notes where you can put in some text so there were three builds that we tagged and the tag we created was test one two three we have 153 changes we found and we found six work items so here's each one of the builds with a link to each build and what repos they have and how many work items they've got. Then we create a link to each one of the stages. And then each work item associated with that build. And we can click on it and go right to the work item. And then each one of the changes, and this will link to the repo and to the build. And then, oh, here, let's do it this way. Down at the very bottom are the two artifacts that it found for those builds. So that's how you do release notes based on a query or based on going from a build. Uh, questions, comments? Is there any questions in the chat? Um, there is uh, the one from Jill. If your product is more closed source, how might you exclude more internal changes from a public release now? So once you have the work item, you can decide what you want to disclose, what, what you want to put into your release notes. So I grab the work item and I can grab all of the fields in the work item and then I can decide, you know, you decide how you want this to look. So this is how the particular customer that, that asked me to do this, this is what they wanted. They wanted the tags, they wanted this, and the customer that asked for it to be by um, query, this is the information they asked for. So once, you're, once you have the work item, you can modify that code to bring back anything you want. And uh, Deborah is asking um, if you need templates for this to work, as in uh, the input. No, because all you need is if you're in Azure DevOps, all you need is the query. And then we're actually building that template ourselves. So if you're familiar with how a wiki page works, if you go to edit that wiki page, so here is the markup. And if you look in the code, you'll see that I have a table of contents and I'm adding all these in with carriage turn line feeds. I'm building this any way I want to. So once you've decided what your output's gonna look like, then you can take this, the script and just go create a new query. I mean, I can go, we can go create a query and put, you know, a hundred rows in it. So if we come in here, To queries and we go to the user store queries and we edit it um, how do we get rid of that what do we get Does not contain back on item. What do we got? 
All right, so now we have 157 items. I can save this query and run it, and we'll get 157 items in our um, wiki page. So the template you're creating, you're actually creating the template when you create in the code, you decide what you want it to look like. Um, Deborah, I don't know if this answered the question. Maybe I have interpreted it wrong. Um, so the full question sounded um, how organized, uh, for example, your JIRA tickets need to be. Uh, that's what I was trying to say as like input. So what would be the prerequisite to be a to be even be able to do this? Um, so a JIRA ticket is the same as a, a work item, a, a user story in Azure DevOps. So all you need is a query that brings back the list of those um, tickets. And then when they click on the uh, the link towards the ticket, then however the ticket looks is another thing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Joe O'Brien is um, asking, what scripts languages uh, should they consider using to build something like this for Jira? Because he finds this a great solution, but they have Jira. So if you have Jira, I would use the same, I would use this code. So here's my repo. I would use the same code, fork it, and then instead of using the Azure APIs, I would go over here to JIRA and use the JIRA APIs. And do it the same way. So if you look in my code, so here is where I build the API. So I'm putting in the prefix. Prefix is HTTPS. I'm actually building the, the API. Here is where, where, where Azure DevOps is. This is the organization, and this is the project name, and this is the rest of the API. So you could modify this to put in whatever you want, you know, your, your JIRA site and whatever other parameters you want. You just modify this, these lines and use the JIRA APIs. I'm actually gonna try to work on one and to set up a JIRA site and try to work on one uh, using JIRA and try to publish that as well. Thank you, and then, um... Let me play the devil's advocate a little bit. What can possibly go wrong? So what can possibly go wrong is 98% of the time is it's going to be that you've got that authentication token wrong. So if you don't set up the right um, permissions, if you don't tell it, you know, I want the, the to be able to write to the wiki, it's not going to do it. it. That's the biggest problem I had. I actually turned this into an extension, and that was the problem we had is getting the token correct. That is the biggest problem. And then just making sure you've got the API set up correctly. Um, you know, I'm a big proponent of putting in breakpoints, and I will grab the API, I'll run it, and I'll stop at the breakpoint and see if it ran, see what the results are, start interrogating the results. Uh, if it didn't work, then you look at what the error is, you know, and look at what the API is that you built. Maybe you, you know, put uh, something in the wrong spot in the API. That will throw it off. Those are the two biggest gotchas, getting the API right. Um, and then once you've got the all the data. The other problem that I had is here. So this is the markup that you see. 
getting this markup correct. And that's where I told you I had problems um, where we had problems with these descriptions. So these descriptions, I had to pull stuff out to get these descriptions to work correctly. So that, you know, getting, reading the data. So in JIRA, probably the same thing, reading the data, that description of what that ticket is or what that work item is. And then when you try to write it, um, it it's not a one for one. So you, you have to pull out any extraneous stuff. You have to pull out a lot of the HTML if you want it to work correctly. At least that's been my, ex uh, my experience. Mm -hmm. And that that's where actually maybe some more strictness about the, the ticket descriptions could be helpful, right? Yeah, you know, you can ask the users, you know, don't don't put in smiley faces, don't put in <laughs> images. <laughs> um, but they're, they're still going to do it. So it, it's better to try to weed out all of that information. Um, and there's other ways of doing it. Mine, my way was just kind of a, a brute force way of doing it. I think there's other uh, functions you can use in PowerShell to strip out some of the HTML. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, would you kindly go back to that very first slide of your two slides uh, where you, there is a QR code so that I assume this points to the code? Yes. And there's also your contact where I guess people can Correct. find you. And there is the repo as well to GitHub repo. So in the meanwhile, thank you, Arthur, very much. Um, and uh, I hope to see many people uh, successful with uh, releasing a whole lot of release notes in one wiki page. Um, and um, my colleagues will be in touch with you of how we can uh, do some sort of a recap that people can find this back later if they weren't here. So thank you very much again. Great, my pleasure. I hope it, uh, hope it helps. It helped us a lot. It saved us a lot of time uh, doing this, not having to do the release notes by hand. Mm -hmm.